Hey, my name is Margaret Wong, and I'm an immigration lawyer, and today we are here to talk about fraud and frivolous issues. Our first question for today is, what is immigration fraud? Actually, this is a very good question. Fraud under immigration law is three things. Material, misrepresentation. It has to be material. So for example, I stole some candies from my auntie, my uncle, and not from my mom. When I apply for my immigrant, uh, for my B2 visa, there's a question there saying that were you ever convicted, um, pled guilty to, arrested for, cited for any criminal records, or done anything that you think is whatever. So is that fraud? Of course that's not fraud because it's not a material mis- representation. We all ran the red light. So do I answer that question? Oh, yes, I've ran like a hundred red lights in my whole life. I should not get a non-immigrant visa. So when, when especially my own staff would come, oh, we're worried about immigration fraud. I'm like, oh, please, you know, and I don't mean to be rude about this. Some of us old timers in the immigration practice would talk to adjudication officers and say, fraud has to be material. So for example, if I'm divorced, but on the non-immigrant visa, I say I'm married now. That is fraud because married people are easier to get non-immigrant visa because if I leave my spouse behind, that's a 214B issue. So that's a material line of questioning. So if I say something and if I don't say it, that B2 visa would be denied. That's fraud. Mm -hmm. Another thing that is interesting is a lot of times because before 9-11 in America, American embassy normally don't che check fingerprints. So a lot of us, what we'll do, especially in Chinese names, we have Huang, like my name is W-O-N-G. I could spell it H-U-A-N-G, H-W-A-N-G. So I can change the American spelling, but also change my date of birth. It still say China. So instead of applying for a visa in Beijing, I can go to Shanghai, go to Hong Kong and apply for that visa. So definitely that's fraud because I know like Hong Kong may be a little bit easier than Beijing and also change my name. I changed my date of birth. Hopefully they didn't know my visa was denied at one time. So that definitely is a material misrepresentation. Another thing we do is certain countries like Patels from India, Gujarat, are very difficult to get visas because it's a high fraud last name and don't ask me why. So a lot of us, we change it to Shah or to uh, maybe a Singh. Actually, Singh's are also difficult to get uh, visas too. So it's we change our last name to something else and keep like Chinese uh, Lin, L-I-N for Fujian. It's very difficult to get visas. So now I change my last name or use my last name, but I say I'm from, couldn't be Shanghai because we speak with a different dialect, from Kwanzhou or from um, uh, Sandong or something. So now that's fraud because I changed my name. I used my name to get a new passport, but that's all very, not recently because now China is also tightening up on computer on passport. So I changed my name, I get a new passport from new place of birth, new registry. Now definitely that's fraud. Not only are they committing fraud in the American system, they're also committing fraud to the Chinese system because they're lying to get a Chinese passport. Our next question is, what could happen if I am caught after doing this? And that's also a very good question. I love this line of question because that's when a good or a, a great immigration lawyer comes in. A lot of times, that's why the FOIA is so important. You check the Freedom of Information Act. You check the USCIS. You check the court FOIA. You check the CBP FOIA. And you really have to go through everything. It doesn't mean immigration doesn't make a mistake. So for example, a lot of these FBI's FOIAs, there's a different date of birth. If you look at the, if you turn the FBI report, that's the second page, this prior arrest record. Then the next page is a birthday and they'll say, oh, US citizen. I'm like, why would my client say he's a US citizen? It turned out they may have used a phony social who died in the meantime as an American citizen. So that social may say that that's an American. So these are little things. Don't just trust anybody. It's your job to check, did my client lie or was that a mistake? 
Also, a lot of uh, different countries, instead of April 5th of 97, they will say May 4th of 97. So did I lie because I changed my birthday? I didn't lie because a lot of cultures, instead of April 4th, we say May 5th because that's how we write our date of birth. That's why it's to be a great lawyer, you don't just just go file some papers. You really have to check and check and check. You have to come up with arguments that, do I need a waiver if I have lied? And also it's a material misrepresentation. And that birthday, it is of course material because anytime you change your date of birth is a problem. The second thing is, is it a miss? I made an utterance, so I made misrepresentation. It is a representation, but it's not a miss because I meant to say April 5th, not May 5th. It's just the way I put down the date. So even though it's material, it's representation, it's not a miss. And that's very important. Uh, attorney, we had something very important here that is being asked. It says the federal government is also worried about fraudulent, frivolous applications. So what does this mean? Is there a difference between fraudulent and frivolous? That's a big, big difference. Absolutely, there's a difference. Frivolous means that you will not be able to be granted any, any future benefits. You would not be able to use a marriage to get a green card. You would not be able to use asylum to get a green card. There's the most important thing about frivolous, especially after the Real ID Act of May 05, May 2005, is that frivolous application means that never, 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 um, you couldn't. That's why anytime we go to court and you filed a frivolous, uh, especially asylum application, that a lot of times the old in the old African countries, the Nigerians will say they're from Congo. Um, the Congo geese may say they're from Mauritania. So these are really serious. Um, fr frivolous means that it's so laughable. It's so such a misrep, such a serious. I hate to use the word lies, that is totally unbelievable and no more benefits, frivolous. So the first thing we do as a lawyer is we need to look at the court for you and reopen the case only to say it's not frivolous. And that's a big win because more and more and more it's hard to get out of being frivolous. Now, fraud is different. Fraud is a 6C. You can still do a 601 waiver, means that as long as you have a spouse, or a parent who is a green card or citizen, a spouse who is a green card or citizen, can do a fraud waiver, a material misrepresentation waiver, frivolous, no waiver. Another frivolous filing is, for example, I never met this girl. And then she used her sister to go to City Hall to marry me. Now I filed a, a marriage case. So at time of inception of the marriage, the papers are really for the purpose of getting green card. It's like a sham marriage thing. That you never, never be able to get the green card except through the non-LPR 10-year cancellation or through asylum. No visa petition could be approved. So frivolous is more damaging than fraud. So anytime you do a petition, you want to argue, not only am I not frivolous, I'm not a foister. But if anything, you cannot be frivolous. Our next question is, what are the consequences of filing a fraudulent or frivolous application? And I love this question. There are two ways in immigration law to practice. One way is to file an application. So this question could mean two things. Number one, what applications am I filing? Am I filing the I-130, the 485, the 589, the 765? And the second thing is when I go to court, which is the master calendar, the IH, when it comes to judges, it's all verbal. And now through the 45 years of in practice, I've seen it all. I've done it. And being an immigrant myself, I really understand. And I love this frivolous and fraudulent and ethics because as a lawyer, we have ethics concerns. Um, we also have uh, bar concerns because our license, we could lose our license if we advise people to file frivolous. 
So number one, do not file frivolous and fraud. But more than that, I always like to tell my people, of course, in, in criminal law trial, we have criminal lawyers in this office who does, that's all they do is like a heart surgeon. They do trials. They don't, they're not mortal like us. I tell them they're immortals. They go to court, they win or lose, they come back, they go do the appeal and they go back to court. So, um, so it's very important to understand what is the truth and what's not the truth. Certain things, it has to be the truth. You're from Mexico, you're not from El Salvador. You are from Hong Kong, you're not from China, even though after 97, Hong Kong went back to China. You're from Macedonia, who just became independent in the 90s or 890. You're from Soviet Union, who fell after 89, fall of the Berlin Wall. So now you have to get a stand, because I said, you know, all those stands. So that's the truth. So if I fill out an application today, it's Croatia, it's Macedonia, there's no more this country, that country, is no more Soviet Union, it's Russia now. So that's the truth today. But at that time, if I filed an application, I would have said Soviet Union before 89, right? That's the absolute truth, God's truth. You cannot change your name. You cannot change, Mexican people have four names. Chinese, sometimes three, sometimes two. You cannot lie about this. But other things, for example, I'm married. I want to change it to my married name. I don't want, like, I never changed my married name. Is that the truth or not the truth? So it's, it's, I think it sounds strange when a lot of lawyers say, oh, you tell nothing but the truth. Tell the judge nothing but the truth. So what is the truth? We have to really be concise and tell clients, what is your name? And then you have to double check their name in the 589. And I'm very serious about this because when it, I hate it when people say, oh, there's fraud in this case. I say, what fraud? Tell me the fraud. Oh, because I met my wife in February um, of 97 instead of April of 97. So under the Real ID Act, is that you need to figure out each point but totality of circumstances. So, I mean, I'm very serious about this because in trial, a lot of cases are lost because the judges would say, oh, it's, uh, it's immaterial, but it's important that how could they not remember their anniversary? How could they not remember the color of the kitchen? I'm like, hey, I've been married for 45 years. I mean, I did because I lost my husband three years ago. But still, it's like I've been doing this for so long that when you're nervous, off-white and start white and little bit pinkish white is a very different wall color. So what is the truth? And I think that's very important. So you, as a good lawyer, as a good principal alien, you need to really be serious about what is the truth. But answer correctly, not so much fraud. Or, don't worry about the word fraud. Fraud frivolous, they're all legal definitions. It's not up to the client to define denial. Of course, you couldn't lie. Please don't lie. But the whole thing is you've been married three times, you're married three times. You've been married two times, you're married two times. Don't come in and say, I'm only married one time because I don't want to tell people, I didn't tell my parents that I was married, stuff like that. Thank you for watching our video here with attorney Margaret Wong. My name is Stephanie Ayala. We hope you enjoyed today's topic. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave any questions or comments down below that we can potentially use for future videos. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For more information about our law firm, check out our website at imwong.com and feel free to schedule a consultation at 216-566-9908. Thank you.